GeForce Now is a cloud gaming platform that seems to be dominating the gaming scene lately. With the renaming of their top membership tier and their cloud gaming rival Stadia now defunct, will GeForce Now be a suitable gaming solution for you? We have the details on all of the tiers, including the free tier, so let's dive in. First, you might be wondering what the heck cloud gaming is. We have a ton of information on this, but to keep it super simple, it's Netflix for gaming. Play your games through the cloud. No game installs. No game consoles. No super expensive supercomputer. Only if you want to. This includes playing on PC, on your mobile device, or on your TV. It's that easy. You might need a bit of hardware to actually play your games in certain circumstances, but we'll get into that later. Now, how does GeForce Now work? Good question. It's fairly simple. GeForce Now plays the games you own from third-party game distributors like Steam, the Epic Game Store, the EA app, and others. Buy your own games from these sites and you'll be able to play them on GeForce Now through the cloud. If you're a native PC gamer, you should fit right in. You should know that many of these third-party distributors offer many popular free-to-play games like Fortnite, Genshin Impact, CSGO, Rocket League, and many more. With the free tier of GeForce Now, you'll be able to play any of those games almost instantly on any device for absolutely free. This aspect has been making the platform extremely popular. So what's the catch? There's always a catch. Let's start with the free tier first since most will be signing up with this. Now since our last Before You Buy video on GeForce Now, the platform has increased its members by at least 10 million. Now keep this in mind because this affects the free tier a lot. Now to get started with the free tier, all you have to do is sign up for a free NVIDIA account and activate your GeForce Now membership in the account settings. Simple. From here, you can sign in to use GeForce Now on any device where it's supported, including Chromebooks. Their app works great, especially on desktop, and you'll have access to their full library of over 1,500 games on the platform. Now if you're looking to get started with GeForce Now, we have a full getting started video to help you get set up. Now you might be saying this sounds great, but there must be some other catches for being free, and you would be right. There are two huge downsides to the free tier. The first being the queue wait time. Remember when I mentioned the increase of GeForce Now users? GeForce Now only has so many free spots at one time. Depending on where you're located, this could be several hundred at a time. And now, there are millions of new free users trying to get in every day. Now the second major downside of the free tier is the hour limit per session. Once you actually get into your game after waiting in the queue, you only get one hour to play your game. So this might limit the types of games you play. So you know those games that might take over an hour like running raids or a long campaign mission. You might have a hard time squeezing that into the hour time frame. The free tier is a lot more suited for playing games with quicker multiplayer matches like Fortnite or Rocket League where you can manage that hour accordingly between matches. Or even single player games where you can generally save and quit whenever you want. Thankfully, GeForce Now doesn't limit the number of sessions you can play in a day, so once you quit a session, you can start again as much as you want. The only thing is, is that you'll enter the queue again for every game you start. Bummer. Now does the priority tier help with the downsides of the free tier? The priority tier certainly does. Not only does it give you a 6 hour session, but now, you'll skip the queue and you'll get this for $10 a month, and to me, that's well worth it. This is even cheaper if you buy the 6 month rate. But, remember those millions of users I was talking about before? This affects the priority tier as well. At peak hours, I've had to wait a couple of minutes to get on because even the priority tier had a queue. This was rare, but yes, it did happen. GeForce Now is getting pretty popular. Now are there any additional bonuses on top of the time limit and the queue for the priority tier? Oh yes. You still get a maximum of 1080p gameplay at 60fps, but now you get access to RTX, aka Ray Tracing servers. So now you can play those games like Cyberpunk and Darktide that have Ray Tracing. For those who don't have a crazy gaming PC or haven't been keeping up with the expensive GPUs every year, this might be a great option for you for great 1080p 60fps gameplay with Ray Tracing for only $100 a year if you buy a subscription at 6 months at a time. This is a steal. But what if you're a hardcore gamer? You have your 1440p, 4K, or even an ultra-wide monitor with a high refresh rate, and you want to know if you can play GeForce Now at the highest level possible with the best quality. In short, you absolutely can. Introducing the newly refined Ultimate Tier. I'm going to break down everything you need to know about the Ultimate Tier. 
This will include the differences from when it used to be called the RTX 3080 tier. So what's the big deal about the Ultimate tier? It is the latest custom cloud gaming hardware from NVIDIA, consisting of top-of-the-line proprietary hardware from their current RTX 4080 Ada Lovelace GPU generation. They call these custom cloud gaming servers the 4080 Superpods. One of the things that makes these servers so special is the fact that no one has this hardware as of now. These are the highest grade cloud gaming servers on the market, hands down. Would you expect anything less from NVIDIA? NVIDIA also claims that because of the power and how fast these machines are, they are able to produce better gaming latency than all previous GeForce Now tiers, and that also includes beating the Xbox all through the cloud. Now to be honest, these were big claims, and we had to put this to the test. Now because of the NVIDIA Reflex technology, which allows your inputs to respond at the GPU level because of the efficiency of the RTX 4080, let me tell you, they were not joking on how fast your response time is. I had to lower my sensitivity in Fortnite because I was overshooting my target. It was that quick, and this was at 4K. Now for those people who already don't have the best latency, latency being the distance from your GeForce Now server, going the ultimate tier route would make up for a lot of lower latency gameplay, even if your game doesn't support the reflex technology. Having more frames produces a faster response time in general. If you're curious on the locations of the GeForce Now servers, the link is in the description. Now the old 3080s they had already provided 1440p resolution at 120Hz and 4K resolution at 60Hz, but now the new Ultimate tier is providing 240Hz gameplay at 1080p, 120Hz gameplay at 4K, and the introduction of ultra widescreen monitors with a top resolution of 3440 by 1440 at 120Hz. Pretty impressive. NVIDIA also claimed that the 4080 Superpods perform 70% better than the old 3080s to easily handle these updated refresh rates. Is this true? Yes and no. This is the most polarizing aspect of the Ultimate tier. Let me explain. These 4080 Superpods support the newly released DLSS3, which is really frame generation. This AI technology adds frames to your gameplay to increase your frame rate dramatically. This is where your 70% performance increase comes from. The problem is, is that as of now, there is only about 1% of games on GeForce Now that supports DLSS3 or frame generation. We made a video on the games that support it if you want to see the differences with frame generation on. Now for those games that have DLSS but not frame generation, we found that we only get around a 30 to 50% performance increase. There are many games that have DLSS but not frame generation, which is DLSS 3. We've also noticed that the best games to benefit from the Ultimate Tier upgrade are older games from the past 5 years or so that have DLSS. These games have made significant performance increases. I wouldn't say 70% though. The games that don't support DLSS at all seem to suffer the most with only a 10 to 20% increase in performance. We also noticed that performance will vary from time to time with different games because they don't always give you the highest tier hardware. Why? Because they're still using the older 3080 hardware for lower end games that don't necessarily need that 4080 power. On the flip side, the 70% increase Nvidia was promoting was just an average. There were a few games that went way beyond a 70% increase. A Plague Tale Requiem, which was in need of a boost from the 3080, and Portal RTX, which was basically unplayable before this upgrade, got well over a 100% performance increase. But of course, why did they have high performance increases? Because these two games support DLSS 3, frame generation. The Ultimate tier has its strengths and its weaknesses. If your game has frame generation, your performance will go through the roof. But if it doesn't, the increase will be pretty minimal to average. Now for those with higher end gaming monitors, this tier is for you. The question is, does the Ultimate tier perform well and hit the upgraded refresh rates? We did a test to see whether their minimum requirements for 240Hz and 4K at 120Hz were enough to handle streams of this magnitude. And as long as you have a stable internet connection with 35 megabits per second for 1080p and 45 megabits per second for 4K and ultra wide, you'll be able to stream in great quality along with high refresh rates. Nvidia has been doing this for a long time now and their experience in streaming shows. Now all this sounds great, right? 
Now here's the issue that you definitely need to be aware of before you buy. The Ultimate tier has minimal video card requirements. Why? Most people can decode 1080p HD streams with no problem these days. We are not at a point where most devices can decode 4K streams effectively. For you PC gamers out there, you're going to need a GTX 1000 series GPU or equivalent or higher if you're going to want to stream at 4K or even at ultra wide resolutions. Check this FAQ page out for a more in-depth look at resolution hardware requirements. Now for those who are not into gaming PCs but want to utilize the full power of the ultimate tier, let's say on a 4K TV, there are a number of avenues. The NVIDIA Shield TV Pro can stream GeForce Now at 4K. New select LG TVs and Samsung TVs with the Samsung Gaming Hub can stream GeForce Now at 4K. Mini PCs are also on the rise, which I've been loving greatly. We have one that has an AMD GPU that hits the minimum requirements for streaming GeForce Now at 4K. It's a fully fledged Windows 11 mini PC, which I highly recommend for cloud streaming, even on ultra wide monitors. If you're looking for GeForce Now Ultimate specific monitors, the Nvidia Shield TV Pro, our mini PC, and compatible TVs, we have all those links in the description. Now, as of now, Nvidia has about half of their data centers upgraded with the 4080 SuperPods. Yes, it is taking a while, but upgrades that happen around the world like this can take quite some time, which is also a reason why this review is coming out now and not earlier when we had early access. How can you give a full review on something that's not even fully released yet? Our servers have been implemented recently to the masses, so our results are what the average user will get. No special treatment here. Overall, the ultimate tier performance is incredible. Remember, the RTX 3080 tier was already the best tier on the market to begin with, so an increase is an increase, even if the increase is minimal. Plus, this upgrade is free! They are keeping the ultimate tier at the same price as the RTX 3080 tier was before, so no worries. Now for the elephant in the room. One of the biggest criticisms GeForce Now has faced in the past year has been their lack of AAA games. They are missing a ton of AAA publishers from their library ever since many left when GeForce Now switched to a subscription model, but there have been developments since then. Capcom has been releasing games along with Bandai Namco. Also, one thing that GeForce Now does allow is the use of the Microsoft PC Game Pass to be used on the service. This means that if there's a game that GeForce Now has on Game Pass that can be accessed through the EA app or Ubisoft Connect, you'll be able to play it. Now you'll have to sync your EA and Ubisoft account before you can play it, but it does work. Check out the video above to get that set up. Nvidia has also announced a 10 year deal that will bring the full line of Microsoft PC games to the platform soon. This includes franchises like Halo, Forza, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Microsoft Flight Simulator, etc. Hopefully this is a great sign of things to come. Maybe we'll see other AAA publishers like WB Games and Rockstar to come back to the platform soon. Now we all know what happened with the Microsoft Activision deal and we'll have to hold off seeing Call of Duty on the platform for now. Now in terms of peripherals, GeForce Now is also compatible with various gamepads including Xbox, PlayStation, and various third party controllers. Of course it really depends on what device you're on for controller compatibility, but as long as your controller can connect, they should be able to play on the service. These controllers come in handy when having people over to play local multiplayer games like Rocket League. The Ultimate tier is perfect for streaming couch multiplayer games at 4K with your select Samsung or LG TV. So is GeForce Now worth the buy? For us, it's the world's best cloud gaming platform hands down. From mobile and casual gamers to hardcore gamers with amazing PC setups, GeForce Now can bring top tier gaming to anyone's device for a fraction of the cost, just as long as they meet the internet requirements. Remember to check whether you qualify for decent quality game streaming on the GeForce Now facts page, but we recommend a minimum download speed of 50 megabits per second for priority members and 100 megabits per second for the ultimate tier for maximum bitrate streams, especially if you live with others using the internet. GeForce Now also recommends a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection if you're on a wireless network or 5G on a cellular network, but being on a wired ethernet connection is the best option. If you like this year's review of GeForce Now, feel free to give us a like. Also, make sure to join as a member of the channel or join our Patreon in the links below. And above all else, make sure to subscribe to keep it locked right here 
at the only place where you can do battle in gaming heaven, Cloud Gaming Battle.